Hello, in this video I will explain how you can create a simple game with the new physics engine that we just released and um, I will also show how you can implement um, animation and characters easily. So let's just start. Uh, we have the scene and now I downloaded models from this website. It's free uh, assets. Um, it's pre pretty popular and you should use those assets uh, if you're prototyping. Um, you can download models from their website easily and now I will uh, rename the scene and I will go to asset tasks I will disable create FBX folder because we don't need this part and then I will create a new folder called models and I will import the character medium model here and um, it will basically upload the model like this so you can use it in your projects and you can drag and drop this rec rectangular uh, shape into the scene these are templates and it has the model inside the uh, entity you can scale it like this and what you can do usually uh, the scene settings are a little bit bad for casual games what I do is just basically lighten up a little bit the ambient color so it's just I can see the scene clearly and now I have the character I will rename it to character and now uh, I will need animations and I will create a folder called animations and I will basically drag and drop the animations files here although since these are animations I don't need templates and I will I also don't need hierarchy files uh, so go to settings, go to import hierarchy and disable it. And now you can drag and drop those uh, animation files here as well. And it will give you some files. We'll check that in a minute. I don't know what the, these files are. But um, now what you need to do is click on character, click on add component and click on NM. So this is a new comp uh, component they added into the Play Canvas engine. Now you can uh, create state graphs with those um, systems. So let's just call it call this character states. And now you can go to editor, and as you can see, it's just a, a graph editor. Uh, first animation can be idle, and then you can add another state for running and you can also make it loop and you can create a variable called running and then you can make it boolean because we are either running or not running right and then you can uh, connect those transitions from idle to run if we are running system will go from idle to run and you can also make it a little bit blending so it it feels nice and from running to idle, you can also create another state, and then that's that condition is not running, right? Basically, and then you can click here, go to editor scene, and then drag and drop this state into character. And once you do that, it will create two uh, animation parts like this. So let's just see which ones are the animations okay this seems like idle animation and this seems like running now we can delete all of the rest of the files and then rename those animations run and idle if you want to preview them later again you can click here go to models and select your template and you can see the animations there too now click on character go to uh, state graph and then attach those animations there once you do that, you can you can check your scene to if animations work uh, well. As you can see, they work well. Now, we will create um, scripts. Let's call this folder scripts, and then let's create um, a JavaScript file called movement. Now, in this file, we will do a few things. We will listen keyboard and then uh, we will move the character now we will create a function called set keyboard this is how I do it usually and then um, basically set keyboard is going to be a function where 
the listen keyboard events. You can do it like this. If this app keyboard um, is pressed, right, P PC key W. In that case, you can listen if you're pressing pressing W. And then you can save this file with command C, uh, S, and then uh, click character again, and then add this moment script as component like this. And now you can refresh the scene, open the developer tools, press W, and you can see it just works. Now, what we are going to do is basically translate the character, right? This entity translate. Now, I don't know the directions, but I will try, right? Just, uh, um, it's X, Y, Z. So now we can also check this here on the scene. So if I move the character like this, as you can see, Z variable moves like, it, it goes like up and backward seems like minus. So what we need to do is increase this number. Translating means it at position to your character. So, um, so if I write this here, when I press W, it will go forward like this. As you can see, it goes forward. Now, what I can do at an attribute called speed, and um, the speed can be used. Um, to make it like change the speed dynamically. And then I can use the speed variable on translate function as well. And if you click parse, you can see it will show up here and then you can change change the variable and then change the speed of the character. Now it's slow, but I can make it fast if I want to. As you can see, it works like this. Now, since we did this, now we can do the opposite like this. Right, so if I press S, it will go backwards like this, and then this is forward. Right, so let's do the sides now. If I press A, it will go this position, so it's minus, it's minus X, and then if I in the opposite direction, it could be pl plus uh, positive. Um, Speed, right so let's see nice so we can go all directions easily this is super nice now other thing we need to do as you can see it just goes like this but we need to first animate and then rotate our character by the way I think the directions are a little bit wrong let me check oh yeah we need to do the opposite sorry Yes. Now, we need to attach our uh, character entity. Yes. And um, depending on the direction we press, um, character should rotate to that direction, right? So, uh, how we can do this? Well, uh, we can we can we can basically. Uh, rotate our character to that direction so if we uh, rotate it like this it means minus 90 so it's it can be uh, it can be done in the button here and then let me test something Ah, wait, I didn't connect the character. Yes, so it works. Actually, this is our entity, so we don't even need to do that. I guess this part can be removed. So this is our entity already. So I attached the script on this, this entity, and we basically need to only rotate this. I usually do it differently, but this project, we don't need to do that. And now for A, it could be the opposite. Let's test it out. Yeah, as you can see, it works now. And then now, default one is zero, zero, zero. 
and backward is a little bit weird but well, let's see we can just copy this rotation variables so this and this yes let's test it out yeah this is nice now so now we need to um, make our character run and that is also easy what you can do if um, we can we can create a, a temporary variable as running called is running so we will set so this is how it works on game engines update function is being run every every frame so it just you know uh, when you're in the game it just triggers this function all the time set keyboard set keyboard set keyboard set keyboard so if you set a variable like this it will always be false and then in this function we can we can set it to true in these conditions so I will explain what it means in a minute so if we console log this you will understand what I mean so it always returns false but if I do uh, if I press buttons as you can see it just returns true so we will use this system to set our animation uh, boolean variable which was is running um, as boolean so see this we created a variable called boolean variable running here and if it's running it basically will trigger this function and if it's not running it will go back to idle state so let's test it out now as you can see i can run around right it's pretty nice now okay and the speed is good too to me honest to be honest yes now final thing that we need to somehow attach a physics engine to it right what you can do is come here go to raw I guess you can do this and then click scripts create a variable sorry script called physics and then copy all of this file and come here and copy all and paste it now you have physics engine on your project click root and attach that script to it that's it and then click parse make sure you click parse so now what we need to do add a collision to it now click character go to character uh, components and then go to physics and go to collision and now you have collision here make sure to make it sphere because only sphere collision works and then let's create a box here for example um, um, here for example we can we can keep it here and then also attach a collision to it and also make sure your character is dynamic so we can move around and let's just test it out now as you can see collisions works for your casual game now you can add many objects as you want and it will work yes as you can see you can collide with those objects now i want to add a few more functionalities so at least we have um, a proper game loop in this game so for example i um i saw some food models here i want to check this out um yes so let's see what we have here i think we have like pizza pizza box here let's let's do something with it and let's search for pizza and then uh, yes we have those settings just upload this pizza here right so oh that's a nice pizza okay so we have the pizza on the scene nice so I'm gonna put the pizza here so one thing that I want to do here um, add a collision to it as well right and make it spare so we can collide with it 
Um, now I will create a, a, a script called pizza. Now I will uh, listen physics engine uh, events and you can listen this event on the object and one of the object uh, one of the events that we have is uh, trigger that happens when a dynamic object collides with the, this object for example on trigger and we will create a function called on trigger and we will console log something collect yes and now uh, attach that script to pizza yes let's see now when you collect a, a when you uh, collide with this object as you can see I can collect it one thing though um, this object uh, should be a ghost object because I don't want to really uh, you know collide with it I will I would like to be able to uh, somehow collect it right and now since that's the case uh, we basically uh, added ghost tag to it now what I want to do is somehow make an object here where I can uh, attach those uh, collected objects top of our head and let's call this uh, bag or something I don't know and now what you need to do um, this trigger functionality also gives gives the entity that uh, collides with us right so if I come here and co uh, collide with it as you can see it gives me um, the uh, character itself and now I will use this to reparent myself into the player and you can do this like this so first we need to find back entity inside the entity object and you can do it by find by tag and name um, so this is the name and if we search in our entity we will find the bag and if we find the bag if bag is available then I will trick uh, reparent myself which is pizza into the bag entity yeah so let's let's test it out because th there might be some errors and as you can see it just uh, reparent itself into that entity although there are some details that you need to be aware of so first uh, we reparent ourselves into that entity but our world position probably uh, is messed up so one thing you need to do is set our local position after we reparent ourselves into that back entity set it to zero so if you do this here I'll show you an example if I reparent the pizza entity there uh, it will um, reparent ourself but the position is still there so it's it's wrong right so it needs to be zero another thing that since we scaled our character that bag entity is super small so you need to scale it up you need to probably make it 100 100 100 because we already scaled down the character and you know some for some reason play canvas messes up the scales of animated objects so you need to make it 100 100 100 so we can see the pizza there but another thing that you need to be aware of that we still have the collision on uh, collision here so once you do that you need to disable the collision of that object so if you are on the top of the head you just need to disable it right so let's just test it out again Let's look at like the camera like this. So as you can see, I collected the pizza. It works nice. So if let's say we have other pizzas there, 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 we just need to collect all of them, right? So you can do this. But as you can see, pizzas are just uh, floating there. So what you can do, add like um, a little bit position to them, each of them. So let me test something first 
I wonder if I add this position what's gonna happen let me test this okay so it has to be like this then yeah so we can let a little bit offset to it what we can do since we have the entity object here um, we can we can we can do this so let's let's say uh, we have uh, we are going to create a variable on this moment entity let's call it a uh, piece account right and set it to zero and then every time we uh, attach a pizza to it we will increase that number pizza count and then we will use this uh, position information to just you know locally add more pizza top of it so that's the idea let's try it out yeah as you can see we can add more pizzas into this guy's head and if you want to you know make the scale a little bit different what you can do is just multiply that number uh, with a with a floating number you can you can achieve different effects like this so yeah we're just collecting pizzas yeah that's it i think this is more than enough for our first tutorial let me let me know uh what do you think if you have any questions please just post it below i hope you enjoyed thanks for watching